Good afternoon, Libé Barrer. Welcome on VH Berries. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I am extremely grateful. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, it's nice. The seasons are changing. It's starting to feel like fall over here. In the beginning, there is an idea. Four syllables, ten letters that have come a long way for the last four years. I am talking about disfluency. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was like, what a way to introduce it. <laughs> This is one of your um, main focus right now. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Um, so Disfluency was, um, it started out as a short film some years back. Uh, it was after, I think it was like the, after the first season of Sneaky Pete came out and, uh, the writer and director reached out to my team and they were like, uh, we have this short film that we think that Libé would be perfect for, um, would you be interested? And I, I read the script and it was this beautiful, really honest story about this girl dealing with, um, Uh, sexual assault in college and it drew some really interesting parallels with the way that we use language um, and uh, the the sort of natural disruptions uh, that we put into our language like our use of the words um like and sorry and even the word sorry and the way that that correlates to the way that we talk about um, rape culture and um, I thought it was really interesting and the short was a really great experience and did really well at festivals and then uh, it got into this like short to lab um, this the short to features lab that uh, our amazing writer and uh, director of the feature Anna Baumgarten did and she was like we're going to make this into feature do you want to come and be a part of this and I was like absolutely and so we went to Michigan and spent a month in Michigan shooting this a uh, beautiful little movie that um, has been doing well. And uh, yeah, it won the Austin um, Austin Film Festival audience prize or whatever and um, some other things. And uh, yeah, they're in distributions in the works and they're like finishing their festival run right now. And um, it's a really beautiful little movie and I'm really proud of it. This is a very uh, beautiful uh, Libé Barrer. And if I understood <laughs> correctly, I mentioned this idea of a four years journey because it went from a short film directed um, by um, a Laura Holiday to a feature film of 95 minutes made by Anna Baumgordon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I didn't even realize that it was like four years. That seems... <laughs> yeah, I guess it, I guess it was. <laughs> um, we shot, yeah, I think we did the pilot, or not the pilot, oh my God. <laughs> um, the, uh, short in like 2016. And yeah, Laura Holiday directed it and Anna wrote it. And it was sort of, um, loosely based on an experience that she had. And then when it came, came time to do the feature a couple of years later, um, she was like, you know, I've been wanting to direct my own stuff too. Um, I think I want to direct this. And I trusted her and she was fabulous. And it was really wonderful working with, with both of them. And yeah, I guess it was, I think it, I think it was only like a year and a half or two years in between us actually shooting them. It's just between them coming out and stuff. I think it's been, yeah, it's been four years, I guess. Have you ever seen those two directors in the same room at the same time? Oh, yeah, they're actually friends. They, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's actually probably not a very different story than what you're thinking it is because, uh, we, they, they're friends and they did the short together. Anna direct, Anna wrote the short and produced it and Laura directed it. And, um, then for the feature, uh, when Anna was like, I think I want to step in and direct it too. Um, Laura was very supportive and she was around as a producer and stuff. And, um, Yeah, they're really, they're really good friends and they're both wonderful and they're both great to work with in different ways. Absolutely. And Libé Barrier, uh, um, this fluency uh, actually went to a lot of festivals and is going to a lot of festivals right now. And if we take 
all of the leaves that we see generally on the logo of fin film festival uh, in which differency uh, appears we could put together a tree <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i guess it has gone to a lot of festivals and yeah i'm really proud of it people seem to be responding really well to it and um yeah I like that way. <laughs> it's uh, definitely a tree of festivals. <laughs> to some extent, when I'm taking a deeper look at uh, this fluency and the meaning of this word, I learned uh, that it uh, means breaks or disruption that occurs in the flow of speech. And it totally uh, rhymes with the storylines. Mm -hmm, totally. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. I think that it's um a really interesting nuanced conversation that uh, the movie centers on and um, really asks us to look about the way, look at the way that we uh, use our own speech and language and the way that that correlates to rape culture. And um, it's it's really interesting and powerful and has definitely made me a lot more aware of the way that I use the word sorry in particular. <laughs> Absolutely, the sentence, I am, I am sorry, is a very important one in the story. And I'm very curious about how you adapted and extended that story from, as I mentioned, a short film to a feature film, because it is a completely new dimension. Mm -hmm, totally. Yeah, so Anna uh, did this um, short to features lab with... Um, uh, the writer director of, um, the movie Thunder Road and a bunch of other movies. Um, and, uh, she developed it into, because the short was, um, it was a little bit more like experimental with the way that they used, like, uh, the way that they explained the disfluency thing. And it, uh, followed the entire story of Jane and, you know, going in college and her sexual assault in the aftermath. And the feature picks up after the, um, like in the aftermath of the sexual assault and she has failed out of college and she is coming back home, uh, for the summer and, um, is dealing with what happened. And, um, it's, it's interesting because it starts out as a sort of like, you know, it's, it, like a summer fun movie but slowly over time we you know find out the truth about what happened to Jane and as it affects her more and more and um, I think it's really unique and um, beautiful and I think uh, really evolved in ways that I don't think I would have seen um, just with the short film. And Libé Barrère, I really like the expression uh, summer fun movie that you just <laughs> used because there is a true um, psychology behind it and i would love to discuss about another aspect of this uh, feature film and short film which is your sister because mm. she's also co-starring uh, inside it and her name mm -hmm. in real life is ariella barrer mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's funny. So she plays my older <laughs> sister in the movie, <laughs> and in real life, she's my younger sister. <laughs> um, but it was really, <laughs> yeah, it was funny, and it was uh, it was really fun though. And um, as you know, we were Anne and I were talking about it like pr pretty early on um, when we got the scripts. <laughs> yeah, and um, I it was it was really fun. We got to play sisters, and you know, it was. Um, it was kind of, you know, we were shooting in Michigan in this lake house and it was an indie movie that we shot for, um, you know, it was like not a huge budget. And so that, you know, brings comes with some challenges and it was a very, very demanding role for me. And so it, I was like, you know, really, it, it, I was like in a crazy place trying to do the, you know, uh, while, while we were shooting this and. And it was really nice, like, having my sister there for support. And, you know, I think also, like, our relationship is very different than Jane and Lacey's in the movie. But the way that she sort of took care of me 
as we when we were shooting and was like there for me was very there were a lot of parallels between our relationships and um we were able to find something really interesting in the movie and um while like having a really wonderful time offset i mean off screen as well having a lot of fun on screen and offset and um, Libé Barrier. What is your upcoming goals with this project? Because I feel that with the speed of creativity, the next step would be to make an entire television series with 16 <laughs> seasons. Yeah, I think that's probably not in the cards for this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's a very self-contained story that I don't think needs more Um, I don't think it needs more, you know, content. I think it can kind of live on its own. But yeah, I, th I think that I know that they're in the process of um, locking in distribution. And so hopefully it'll be available on more, you know, to not just uh, be on the festival circuit. And um, yeah, that's kind of it for that one. This is it for that one. This is the end of a chapter and also the beginning of a new one. Because <laughs> yesterday you just came back from a place located at 50 <laughs> miles away from New York City in Long Island. Yes, yeah, totally. I was uh, shooting a short film that I was directing. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit more about it, Libé Barrier? Yeah, um, I mean, this one was uh, it's it's a it's an interesting story about like the that deals with the sort of complexities and paradoxes of human nature, and uh, we had a really great cast. Um, I got to direct. Uh, I called um, Peter Garrity, who played my grandpa in Sneaky Pete, and I was like, "Will you come and do it? One beautiful scene in this." And um, he was like, "Absolutely." Even though he's doing a play at the Atlantic, which uh, an off Broadway theater here in New York City, um, but he was like, "I'll go before my call time." And so he came, and I got to direct him in this really beautiful scene. And we also got. Um, Catherine Curtin from Stranger Things and Orange is the New Black. And um, yeah, and I got to work with the DP who shot this feature I did a few years ago called Flat Face. And I think that we made something really beautiful and um, unique. This is very unique. And Libé Barrer, I feel that through all of your life, the letter L is an important component of it. For example, as I just mentioned, Long Island, but also uh, <laughs> Libé, and also um, L-A-C-H-S-A. <laughs> oh, my high school. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, what about it? <laughs> I would love to discuss about um, the journey that you've been through, starting from the other side of the United States in Los Angeles and specifically mm -hmm. in the Los Angeles County High School for the Arts. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, so I am... Um I'm from LA and Oof. I had always wanted to act um, for whatever reason kids want to act when they're kids. <laughs> um, and I like did some community theater and I, I loved it. It was a really important part of my childhood. And um, at some point in high school or just before high school, some, um, some manager, so, some like kid who had, who had a manager like, a parent saw me and recommended me to this like kids manager who I signed with. And, um, but at the same time I was going to this, I started going to the Los Angeles County high school for the arts where they didn't let you like act professionally while you went there. because the idea was that, you know, you do their like sort of, it was like a conservatory type high school. It was like the fame high of LA <laughs> is the way that they describe it. Um, and, uh, Yeah, so I like auditioned and worked a little bit in high school, but it was always like school first and audition second. So I did a little bit of like, you know, a couple of Nickelodeon things here and there and uh, in high school. And then, um, but I got really into, so in at my school, there was like, um, you would do your academic classes in the morning and then your arts classes in the afternoon. So we would like do math and stuff in the mornings and then in the afternoons, like go and 
do weird theater stuff. Um, but they also had like in the morning classes, they had these film electives that I got. I started getting into uh, like filmmaking. I got into like I made some short films and stuff that I it really loved doing. And um, by the time that I was graduating, I was like, you know what? I want to um, I was like, I want to put this acting shit behind me and like go move to New York and be a filmmaker. <laughs> um but then with like where I wound up getting in and where it gave me money, like the only place I wanted to be, the place I wound up having to go to was UCLA, which was, which happened to be the only school that I applied to for theater and the only school in LA. And I was devastated. I was like, I don't want to stay in LA and study theater. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was, and I, and I was like, but I, and, but I wound up going and I wound up like it actually, I had some amazing, I took some amazing classes and I got to like also study art history and, um, and, you know, and, and, uh, you know, like Russian literature and some, uh, I took some classes that were really inspiring and I loved, I like took some amazing theater classes that made me also totally, um, reimagine what acting can be and it made me really see acting as like an art for the first time in a really profound way that I hadn't ex I hadn't seen before and um I was like you know I think the first five years out of school I have to focus on this and uh really go for the acting thing and then after that I'll like um you know try and uh, the, after that I'll like see about the directing thing and so I got out of school and the like first year out of school, I got a job as a nanny. <laughs> and also I was like, uh, work at that same manager who I, who represented me at in high school, um, hired me to work in her office in the basement of her house in the Hollywood Hills. <laughs> um, and so I was like nannying in the morning or I was like working in this office in the morning and then I would like eat lunch as I drove to my nannying job in the afternoon and then like do my auditions at night when I or, or like practice my auditions. I would get these auditions and like I would work on them at night um, and then like squeeze them in during the day. And then I started getting work in my first series regular um, on was Sneaky Pete and that shot in New York. And so I got to come to New York for an acting job. And um, it was very much like a dreams do come true kind of thing. And yeah, and so I was acting and um, recently was like, OK, I have to like I, I you know, I've been wanting to do this directing thing, too. And so, um, yeah, so I've started doing that and, and it's been and. I've been, re I was really, I'm really grateful that, um, for the experiences that I've had, you know, since I, and that I didn't start like directing right away, that I didn't go to college for, uh, film because I think I like needed a lot of life experience and now in this time and with the, with the life experiences that I've had that I feel like I have something to say and the set experiences that I've had and everything I've learned from like the amazing, amazing actors I've worked with and directors that I've worked with. Um, I feel like I'm now in a place where I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start my film thing. I'm gonna start my direct, my writing directing thing. Libé Barrer, if I understood correctly, the Alashsa uh, school uh, yes. didn't allow students to actually act, which is horrible yeah. because, because they're preventing you to succeed too soon. I mean, yeah, it's funny. At the time, <laughs> that's the way I thought. But now I'm like, I'm so glad that I wasn't doing that in high school. Like, you know, I just... um I just finished, I just read Jeanette McCurdy's book and, you know, and you hear about all of these like child actors and their lives and, so, and I'm just like, I'm so glad that I got this, like, that I got a real childhood and that I got to like have this weird, interesting high school experience and like, you know, maybe it, I, you know, I didn't start as young and maybe it set me a little behind, but in exchange, I got my life and I'm really grateful for that. That's very inspiring, Libé Barrier, because you just mentioned just before uh, that uh, your parents always wanted you uh, to do school first before anything else. And this anything else obviously includes acting. Yeah, yeah. They they were very against me being a child actor. Um, you know, they were always very supportive about, of whatever I wanted to do, but they... Um, Yeah, they never wanted me to be a child actor, and uh, I'm grateful for it. <laughs> and as the day of today, they are watching I See You and Slap Face and are very scared of Mindy <laughs> yeah. and Anna. Of what? 
Oh, of <laughs> Mindy and Anna, yeah. Mindy and Anna, which are the two uh, very important characters of those two uh, thriller and horror movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're both, they're very, two very different movies, um, two very different experiences, but I really had a wonderful time working on both of them. And, and yeah, and, um, through Slapface, that's where I actually, on this short that I directed in Long Island, I brought on the DP from Slapface, DP'd it. So I got to work with him in a different capacity, which was really fun. And also the production designer, uh, from Slapface also, I, I brought, she also, I brought her on to, um, production design this, uh, this short and they both did such amazing work and it's fun like getting to work with people again in different capacities and yeah and Lee Baberer I wonder what is your personal relationship with uh, the horror uh, genre uh, because uh, I see you and Slapface are uh, related to that but there is always that uh, imagery of the wood during the night and even for a uh, dispensy, uh, this idea of um, the dark and the unknown. Yeah, it's interesting. I um, I think horror is a really interesting vehicle to explore. Uh, you know, di- like I, to explore different ideas, and um, I think that we. Like over the last few years, particularly, we've been seeing, um, we've been seeing the way that, you know, the way that that can, the, the medium can be used beyond just like scare tactics, like, you know, with Jordan Peele's movies and stuff. And, <laughs> um, and I think also, I think, yeah, Slapface was a really interesting, uh, explored really interesting ideas about like trauma and using like the monster as a vehicle to explore these, to explore ideas beyond, um what beyond like just a scary monster and uh and i think yeah and i think that movies that create a visceral experience to have a conversation about ideas are are really interesting to me and um i i personally don't uh, like i i i can i really appreciate that and i love movies that do that that said i am not a huge horror <laughs> horror fan um and yeah, and doing horror movies and like thrillers and stuff. I, I don't think either of these were really horror horror movies. Um, maybe Slapface a little bit more so than I See You, but I think that they're I ha- they were both really fun to work on. Um, but um, yeah, I think horror horror isn't my go to genre. And also, yeah, doing them like it takes a lot out of you. Like spending you reading a script like you know it's a page of you know set like. Uh, a page of whatever the person is going through like uh they're like you know under the bed crying or whatever and you you read it in the script and you're like oh that's the thing that's gonna happen and then you get to set and you're like oh no that is like a day of me having to be in this emotional state <laughs> in this like you know tight physical location and um yeah so i think for me to have to do one of those again i have to like really love love the script which i did for both of those but yeah the horror movies really take a lot out of you to do <laughs> it isn't your go-to libe barrier mm. and monsters are scary as well as dinosaurs but not <laughs> the dinosaurs from the cartoon marvel's um moon girl and devil dinosaur that is going to come very soon yeah, yeah, a very different type of uh, monster, <laughs> <laughs> but good pivot. Um, yeah, it that's um, a superhero cartoon that um, I've been recording for the last, like, it's been what, like, I think it's been over two years now, and it's going to finally come out in January, so we're starting to, like, do press and stuff to get ready for, for that to come out. Absolutely. And uh, if I'm correct, this is one of your first voiceover uh, project? It's my first like regular, well, sort of. I did, I did duck, I was on DuckTales. Um, I, I played this like uh, little purple bird named Violet Saberwing, but I was, I was a recurring guest star on that one. 
And I did this Disney, this um, this like mini series called Star Darlings. But um, this is my first like, you know, being one of the leads in a real cartoon. And um, yeah, it's been it's a lot of fun. I, I just recorded a, a, a couple episodes today. You mean that you recorded some episode from your place with the same microphone that you're using right now? No, okay. I think, thankfully not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went into this. We we're, we're back in the studio, but we did like for the first um, because we started recording the cartoon went in the depths of the lockdown um, in 2020. Yeah, that summer of 2020 is when we started. And so, yeah, they sent me Disney sent over equipment and I converted my singular apart, my singular uh, closet in my apartment because I live in New York City. So like I don't have an abundance of closet space. Um, and so I converted that closet into my recording studio and I recorded a lot of the first uh, season from there. But now we're back in the studio. But yeah, it's really wild to think that like, you know, when you watch the first episodes that we were like, in our closets recording from across the country. <laughs> this is barely uh, noticeable and this is fantastic because it means that before uh, talking uh, uh, with me today, you had a sort of warm up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I warmed up my voice. <laughs> thank you very much, Libé Barrière. Yeah, thank you.